Hi, so I'm going to explain basal ganglia in form of a story and with the help of this diagram. So firstly, I'm going to introduce the characters of this story, then I will explain the story and lastly, I will go through the physiology of the basal ganglia. This guy over here is uh, Mr. Homunculus, which basically represents motor cortex and uh, his problem is that he has to make a movement, he has to lift weight, but he cannot do it uh, on his own. Someone has to push this power button so uh, he can move his muscles. Here we have a straight guy. He is so straight, his name is Triatum. Basically, he is a Putin with a long tail. So basically it signifies this striatum consists of uh, putamen plus caudate nucleus. Oh, and he is the boss of the gang. Here we have a black figure. Uh, basically substantia nigra means black. Nigra means black. And he deals in weapons. Uh, his weapon number one is T1 which is basically um, an a bow and an arrow and the other weapon is D2 which basically is uh, the robot from Star Wars. Here we have a goblin uh, which basically represents Globus pallidus internal. The I in, in the end uh, signifies that it is internal and he's holding on to a uh, balloon which is basically thalamus. We'll come to that later. Over here we have another creature. Um, we are not gonna call it goblin, we are gonna call it goblex to signify that it is globus pallidus external and he is also holding on to a balloon but this time it is not thalamus, it is subthalamic nucleus. So uh, these were the characters and now let's just get back to the story. Uh, so this guy, Mr. Homunculus, he wants to lift this weight but he cannot do this. He need, cannot reach this power button. Someone has to push this power button so he can lift this weight. So he contacts a gang which is basically basal ganglia and uh, he calls Mr. Putin, the straight guy, and he asks him if he can help him in uh, pushing that button. From here on, the story can take two paths. Uh, if he uses D1 as a weapon, which is bow and arrow, he can shoot this goblin, and this goblin will let go of the balloon, which is thalamus and the balloon will fly away and hit this power button and a movement will be initiated and we call this path direct path which is excitatory pathway so direct pathway initiate movement on the other hand inhibitory pathway uh, stops movement it doesn't initiate movement an inhibitory pathway is initiated when D2 robot is being sent to kill Goblex and when Goblex is killed it uh, let go of its balloon and its balloon fly away and the goblin watches it and when the goblin watches it he becomes even more protective about his balloon so he's not letting go of uh, his balloon he's like my precious and he cannot let go of his balloon so this was the story now we should uh, go to the physiology motor cortex excite striatum through glutamate now just remember here we have green dots here and red dots here. Green dots uh, represent excitatory neurotransmitter which is glutamate and the red dots represent inhibitory neurotransmitter which is uh, GABA. So 
and uh, also remember that there is uh, dopamine which uh, works from here the nigrostriatal pathway one of the four dopaminergic pathways yes. direct pathway will be striatum inhibiting globus pallidus internal and stopping it from inhibiting thalamus and thalamus in return uh, excite uh, the muscle fibers indirect uh, pathway which is inhibitory is when striatum inhibits globus pallidus external from inhibiting subthalamic nucleus and the subthalamic nucleus has an excitatory effect on globus pallidus internal excitation of globus pallidus internal means uh, further inhibition of thalamus lastly a substantia nigra give its in input to striatum uh, through D1 and D2 dopamine, dopamine receptors. D1 helps in initiating a direct pathway and D2 helps in initiating inhibitory or indirect pathway. So that's all.